This is one of many papers from an experiment that we did in 2008, which we call the 2008 North Atlantic Bloom Experiment. These plants grow. It's a big bloom of, of algae, phytoplankton, and this is a really major event in the Earth's biogeochemistry. It pulls in a lot of carbon. One of the major findings from, from this study was that what initiates the bloom, what gets it going, are a bunch of eddies that are formed in the oceans. In the previous paper, we discovered that there was a physical mechanism for bringing the phytoplankton into the light. So in this paper, we discovered that the same mechanism takes the carbon that's created in the light and pushes it back down to the ocean. So there's a cycle of growth and a cycle of exports. All right, give us a bump, Mike. The one thing that we did in the North Atlantic Bloom was we used robotic platforms. The role of the robots was to make measurements that began well before the bloom started and extended until well after the bloom had played out. Another novel aspect was the real-time data return. We have two-way communications with our instruments. We talk to them over Iridium satellite telephone. One of the interesting things here was that our collaborator, Mary Jane Perry, at the University of Maine, was looking at this data as it came in, in particular the biological data, and noticed that there were um, bumps, irregularities in the biological signals at depth during the, uh, during the late bloom phase. And it was really Mary Jane who recognizes the significance of these bumps understood that they were perhaps the signature of things being exported from the surface into the interior and kind of urged all of us to do a better job of sampling them and to, to actually go after them in the analysis to try to understand why they were there and where they were going. That's why we care about this because the carbon dioxide that comes out of the atmosphere goes into the phytoplankton. It's not in the atmosphere anymore and it doesn't contribute to warming the earth. Then you say, well, what happened to that carbon? And that's the focus of this particular paper. None of us are smart enough to do everything, so we need people from lots of different disciplines to tackle the hard problems that we're trying to address. And so the team we put together for the North Atlantic Bloom experiment included APL, myself, and Craig Lee, and our engineers and technicians and graduate students. We also had a, um, Mary Jane Perry from the University of Maine, who was a biologist. And then we brought in, actually after the field work, Amala Mahadevan from Woods Hole now, um, to do the modeling and to work with us on, on how, the ed, how the biophysical interaction worked. And she brought in a woman who's the chief author in this paper, Melissa Omond, who was a postdoc for her and is now a professor at University of Rhode Island. The, the same eddy dynamics that can trap the, the phytoplankton near the surface can swirl them around and inject them into the interior. And that's, that's what's happening later in the bloom. And that's what's, what's causing this flux of carbon that we see and that's, that's represented in this paper.